What we're going to talk about is the uh, condition of tracks and what, uh, what to look at to see if you're in need of uh, replacement ones. This particular machine has got some brand new tracks, it's a new machine, and you look at the tread depth. This one is about, uh, about an inch deep in tread depth uh, from new. It also has some raised areas here that kind of give you an indication when you're worn to that you're definitely completely worn out and uh, need to replace the tracks. The other areas that you look at is that where these rollers roll on down and below here. As it's used in gravel and stone applications, it gets into there and tears up the inside of this area here. The center lugs here are where the sprocket actually grabs onto and there's steel bars that go across. And you have to look at that to see if any of them are torn loose into this pad area here. Uh, this one is all in perfect condition, obviously because it's brand new. This next one we're going to talk about is a track off of a mini excavator. The previous one was a, a skid steer a track skid loader. This track is probably better than half worn out. If you put a tape measure on this one for tread depth, uh, you're probably lucky to get three eighths of an inch of tread depth on that one. The reason this one is could have still been used because it isn't completely worn out. Usually a mini excavator is not so much about traction as it is for flotation and movement and still being able to have traction to move. This one was taken off because they had an error on the other side where they broke the track and the customer decided to put two of mine at one time since this one was worn so much. On the inner portion here you can see a little bit better the steel bars because the, the rollers were actually riding on the steel. Uh, in a mini excavator, you see that more often than you do a skid loader. And these are the bars that I'm talking about that generally start tearing loose and coming out on a skid loader that you have to pay attention to. The rubber will crack and you get distorted out here and eventually the, the bar will tear loose. This one also has some cuts and gouges and such like that on it, but it was not really in need of replacement at this time. This could possibly make a good spare track for somebody to get them out of a bind. This last track that we're going to talk about is uh, failed for multiple reasons. This one is absolutely has no tread left. As you can see, there's no cleat material left on it on either side. You can barely see the outline of where there was a cleat. In between, you can see where the steel cords are. They're all turning to rust and starting to fray. That's doomed to uh, for a failure where it's going to snap the track. But at this point, this is so worn out, it's, all it's doing is giving the man flotation. It has no traction to speak of. Down in the bottom here, this is the area I was talking about when stone and everything gets inside of it, it starts tearing up the inside of the track. And you can see it at these several different locations. That's actually where the bars are going across the track. Um, pretty soon that will also start failing. And those uh, steel bars will start coming loose from the cables and, and start spitting out there. Because uh, under heavy traction conditions, it starts pulling on those bars when it's so worn. And we have a problem with here, these areas here. You can see where the bars are coming in. You can see where the wear is. And that has to do with debris and everything getting in there and working between the wheels and that steel bar area. Uh, starting to cause failure. This particular track uh, should be replaced right now uh, because he's doomed to fail and chances are it'll fail at the most unopportune time. So you, you would want to get this one replaced because of all these different reasons.